Hello, I'm Entrilisium, and welcome to Aurora Forex, the incredibly in-depth space strategy game, which is amazingly, frustratingly addictive. So, we've just managed to get our refueling system of 60,000 liters per hour operational. That means we need to make ourselves some tankers. So let's first of all check what sort of size we want these tankers to be. Obviously, tankers are pretty chunky to an extent because they've got to have a lot of fuel on board. But where are we going to produce them? Uh, this is kind of taken by our colony ships, although we haven't produced any in a while. This is taken by our Jagnaps, and we are producing a lot. This is taken by troop transports, which, to be quite honest, we're not going to produce many more of. And this is not going to be used to produce any more stabilization ships. We kind of have enough. That said, the tug one, near nah, yeah, we'll probably be fine for now. We'll see. We've got a few options, so let's just start whipping up something and see what we can make. So this is going to be the squid. And it's going to be a tanker. So we'll roll down to tanker. And then we know we need a refueling system. It's going to be the 60,000 liter one. We might need to, you know, change that around at some point. And then we're going to chuck on ultra large. 20,000 liters of fuel. Maybe. Hmm. And then we're going to give it, say, a decent drive. I mean, here's the thing, right? If we want a if we want a tanker that can go with our military ships, we want a tanker that can keep up. Like, that's going to be like a, you know, a combat tanker or something. Probably going to be a completely different spec to this. This is going to be a, you know, kind of chill tanker. Something we'll use for ferry runs. Something that we'll use to go and, you know, collect fuel from depots or whatever. And we can use to, you know, refuel tugs as they're going miles and miles and miles out of their way. So, it's probably just going to have the really crappy engine. There we go. Now, this thing could afford to have a bigger engine. Like, it's got enough fuel on board. I said, obviously, we don't really want it eating all its fuel. But when you're talking about this much fuel, it doesn't really matter. What if we just trade this out for the bigger engine? It could go pretty damn fast. Uh, what if we made this go fast enough to keep up with the military? Well, that's actually tempting. That's 20 million litres of fuel. It goes as fast as our military ships. We could even chuck on a bit of armour if we wanted. You know, maybe like five or something. And it doesn't even need to go this fast. This is combat speed. If we're just going to, you know, poot along towards wherever we're doing the fighting, it doesn't necessarily need to go that fast. It could go like, say, 4,000. And that cuts a lot of drives. That cuts four of our ten. We could even maybe, say, go three and a half. I don't think we get the same earnings on that. Yeah. And hell, we could we could add more, we could make this bigger. I'm considering we aim ourselves at that eighty five thousand ton. Yeah. So let's add uh, another ultra large. And then add a few more engines to kinda like get us back to that four thousand ton mark. Four thousand kilometer, sorry. Yeah, this is almost eighty thousand tons. Uh, the build cost is a bit high. We've got the refueling system. Now, here's the downside on this. This refueling system is only going to transfer 60,000 fuel. It will take 20 days to refuel this entire tanker, which also means it's going to take 20 days to refuel the ships it's with. Um, this is the point where you're like, yeah, it's not going to help. Like, we can add more of these, and you notice that the refueling doesn't change. Adding more refueling systems doesn't actually improve it. So, it's probably better off having multiple smaller tankers. So, if we're looking at, like, you know, six fuel tanks, we could go down to, like, two fuel tanks. And then we're looking at a 27,000 ton vessel. Uh, we could probably reset in the place we're doing honkers. 
Yeah. We'll add a... Cut some armor. Get it down to like four. Three. Yeah. Two, one. Ooh, look at the build cost. Yeah. Maybe it is better to have a separate tanker that can be our military tanker and not. Is there like a separate designation for like a military tanker? Because we've got tanker. Is it like military tanker? Or fleet tug? Fleet support vessel? I don't think there is like a fleet tanker or anything like that. Uh, no. Okay, well, it's going to be tanker. And here's the issue. Do we really want to design two of these? Because that means two different slipways being used. Well, two different shipyards being used. Not massively. Do we really care if it's just a bit overspecced or something? Provided it's got the speed to keep up with a fleet, we can drop the armor down. We just, you know, chuck more of them. The, the big problem with getting a tanker shot isn't really losing the tanker. It's losing the fuel. So, I think this is fine. Armor rating, we could maybe go to three. It does increase the BP by about 160, which is an increase of over 20%. But if it's going to take a hit, hmm... Yeah, probably needs it. Maybe later on we can bring something in that's going to be a like a dedicated chill tanker. Or maybe we do just separate builds. Yeah, either way. Now we're going to mark this as a tanker as well. I'm going to keep 10% of fuel, which is going to be a million. Uh, I'm actually going to go and I'm going to increase this to 11 million because of that. That way it can have 10 million to give and it can keep a million of its own. So I'm going to go fuel. Uh, fuel, 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 fuel. Not large. I actually want very large, don't I? There we go. Uh, it starts to slow down a little bit. I guess we could just use a slower one and we could operate like like a relay. We could put them out ahead of time. That might be the best plan for now. And then we'll make like a military tag, uh, tank, uh, tanker? Tug? Tanker. There we go. Tanker. We'll make a military tanker later on. Words are difficult. Uh, we'll add a engine, which is going to be the efficient engine then. We'll add two of those. And then... Uh, we will we'll keep a very large tank on there. This can transfer 10 million liters of fuel. That's respectable. Again, it's going to take a long time. What's that? Like seven days to do a complete refuel? So it's going to go to Earth, spend seven days in Earth orbit, go, spend seven days refueling, come back. And that's if it can refuel in seven days, obviously. That's fine. Again, we're going to drop the armor down. This is just a perfect commercial tanker. Nothing fancy, not even SeaWiz on it. We haven't actually touched on SeaWiz yet, but it's the commercial anti-missile thing. Here's the issue with it. If you're by yourself and a missile comes at you, SeaWiz is not going to make a difference if more than like two missiles come at you, which nearly always is. Um, if you are in a fleet and you are a tanker and you've got the fleet helping, then the SeaWiz might make the difference because you're not going to be as heavily armored as the rest of the fleet. So in that circumstance, yes, SeaWiz is good. Otherwise, ugh. right, okay. This seems good. I don't think we need anything else here. This is, you know, it does the job. It's a pretty smallish tanker, but that's fine. I don't think more than 10 million at a time is needed, especially because you can do multiple shuttle runs. Or we can just put multiple people on a shuttle run. If we went larger, we'd have to skip the 43, and we'd have to go up to using maybe the 56 if we stop doing colony ships, which we haven't done for a while. Or we could go to the 85, at which point... If you go to 85, you're talking like, hey, we're taking 50 million litres of fuel on the go or something. That's just bonkers. Like, we don't need 50 million litres of fuel sitting in one tanker. Bit too risky. I'd rather just have more tankers coming and going. 
uh, especially at this stage. Ideally, I'd want this to maybe be 35,000 tons, but we don't have something for that. So this is going to be the squid class tanker. It is a tanker. Uh, and we will go over to our miscellaneous commander priority um, zero. Minimum fuel, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yep, that's set to a million. Um, honestly, we could probably go lower than that. Go 500,000. That should be enough to get it anywhere it wants to go, especially on these efficient engines. And we will lock the design. Um, maybe just for simplicity's sake. We'll make it... Oh, wrong one. Is that the wrong one? Yeah, I want the large fuel tank. There we go. There we go. We'll make it 10 million and a half. The half is what it keeps. Lock the design. Go over here and say, hey, Honkers, you've done a great job so far. We've built extra of you that are just sitting in orbit, waiting. We're going to... Wrong run. We're going to refit for squid. And that'll be done really quick, actually. I must share, like, similar drives. Right, oh, good job. Oh, we also have 10 million people now on the moon. Well, actually, 13.85. And they're growing at 9.58%. So hopefully that'll make itself uh, useful. But we do have, like, 6 million people who are just sitting on the moon doing nothing. We could send them stuff from Earth to do. Which I'd like to do. I very much would, but we don't have any colony ships available. Not colony ships, uh, freighters available. So we're probably going to have to do something about that. We are building more freighters at the time. And once they're done, great. Um, we're also going to Slaying Hurdle and unloading a load of stuff. Slaying Hurdle, how are you doing? Slaying Hurdle, Slaying Hurdle. Okay, yeah, you've got a good amount of population support for infrastructure. We're going to send the Sapphire Ebony's over there. These go all the way to Slaying Hurdle. And then unload the colonists. And then come all the way back again. Okay, we've just completed research into heavy vehicles. We're now working on heavy vehicle armor. And we've just also got increased research speed. I'm so happy. We really needed that. Perfect. Which frees up uh, 11 research labs to do whatever we want with. Now, what do we want to do with them? Uh, wealth is going down. But we have so much that we can, you know, worry about that another time. Fighter production rate, maybe. Ordnance production rate is under missiles kinetic. Oh, we haven't even done ordnance production rate 12. Do that right now. Ah, oh, you're working on something else. You know what? Queue up that afterwards. Hmm. Okay, actually cancel the Gauze Cannon altogether. Work on ordnance production rate. That's much more important right now. And do so with... 18 people. My reasoning for that is that I've set up ground combat for two people. One of them's doing the heavy armor. Someone else over here, Peter Distelia, is working on troop transport bays. And I actually want these to be done. I, I love construction production, but we need these to be done. Okay, that'll be done March next year for the ordinance. Great. At which point we can change back. Okay, we've retooled for the squids. Which means, start producing them. Now, how many do we want to produce? Uh, I'm going to say for now, we'll produce five. On the basis, we're going to use them as shuttles for fuel from some of our fuel bases. We're only actually producing one at the moment. But also that we're going to use them to go with the fleet. And that's going to eat a lot of fuel. So we'll build five of them. Right, 
Finish production of these drives. That's lovely. That gives 20% unused. We're going to put it onto the fuel base, which means we're actually going to have half our entire industry working on this one project. We done in May. Great. Uh, Jagnaps are done. We want to produce more of them. So please do so. One, two, three, four. And now we're going to start work on the new generation of survey vessel. And this one isn't going to be a combined geo and grav. It's just going to be grav or geo. The idea being that like our grav one can go out quickly, go bam, 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 multiple systems going through them. And then we can identify which ones might actually be useful to us and then send the geo on. So let's go. And whoops, wrong one. There we go. Design a new ship. Uh, this being separate ships, it will not be the Sophie Set Exploration ship. And in fact, I'm going to obsolete that right now. Uh, not show obsolete, sorry. Sophie Set. Make obsolete. This is a new ship class. And this is going to be the Leon Cornelius. And you are a Grav Survey ship. GSV, Gravitational Survey Vessel. And then we need to decide that you are going to be prefixed with a G1 because technically you are the first gravitational survey vessel. And we're going to name you after... Hmm, what would be a good name? Swedish fantasy creatures. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Actually, do they have um, culture ships? Culture. I think culture is it. I mean, it's ships from the culture. Or culture or culture universe or whatever that culture will do. It's not just cultures. Yeah, culture. Sure. Uh, commander priority. Yep, it's pretty important. Okay. Now, designing this, we're going to go for 7,000 tons or less. We need a jump drive. We need an engine, obviously. But I also want to put multiple geo survey sensors on this. It's going to make it expensive because geo survey sensors are really expensive. I mean, gravitational, but they're both really expensive. Um, if you look at them, the build cost of this is 100 just for one sensor. Four and a half of these sensors would be the same cost as a freighter. So we're going to put on four, a full kiloton of gravitational survey sensor. And it'll survey much faster than our previous one. We also need to find an engine for it and a jump drive. Now, these engines aren't going to cut it. These are huge. Like we're talking, you know, five kiloton engines that we don't need. Like that's that's not necessary. Not necessary at all. What we need is a ship that can go for a long time. And we're going to pop over to our ship optimizer. I'm going to say, hey, what if we went for like, mm, you know what? Let's go for 5,000 tons. Don't calculate the armor. Calculate me a jump drive. It wants to be commercial. Um, engine can be. Let me see if we've got a fifth of our ship has to be engine. But if it's a commercial drive, it has to be a quarter. So we're looking at 1,250 tons for the jump drive. Okay. And if we're looking at that, then 2,000 tons for the engine and fuel is fine. Maybe we go higher. Go like 2,500 if we're lucky. Uh, but we do want the desired engine minimum to be one and the desired range to be huge. Like truly huge. Again, I like to be able to just let my vessels do their thing. And for these ones especially... Okay. Oh, eh, speed. Whoops. Um, let's say we want to go 2,000. Okay. Here we go. Now you're talking. Uh, plenty of available space. In fact, to the point where I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> we don't need that much space. Take away this. Fuel. 
uh, we're using currently like 1200 tons. It's saying, hey, we can we can do this and we'll have loads of space left. Okay, in which case, why don't we just, you know, make it smaller? Smaller jump drive. We could do that with all half a million liters of fuel. If we go down to like 4,000. We don't care about the size, so we're going to leave that. And then we're going to go, hey, can we jump just a 5,000 ton vessel? Oh, we have to pick between 4.5 and 5.5. Ugh. Yeah, that's annoying. Um, Do we think we can do this in a 4,500 form factor? That's the question. If I give you 45%. No, that's not going to work because the jump drive is going to be going to leave us with like 400 tons. 25, which is the minimum size before it's considered military. Mm, that's when we're having some fun here. We're actually trying to figure out how the hell to get this to work without it turning into a military vessel. Um, all right. I mean, it is a military vessel, but it needs to be a, you know, a, a uh, what's the word? A civilian drive and a civilian jump drive. Actually, technically, no. We could use a military drive for this. The efficiency would cost us. But we'd also get a more efficient jump drive. This is interesting, actually. Uh, we would lose a bit of space, though. Would it allow us to go faster? It might. Uh, no, it would cost us on space. Oh, but the jump drive's smaller. Well, that's actually really tempting. Uh, I think we'll stick with civilian for now, just because we've started down the route. That's that's really the only reason. Uh, okay, where were we? 25. There we go. Right. Naming convention. Company name. Galna Marine. There we go. This is a MPDC with the EP of 180 and FPH of 10.8, a mass of 1.25 kilotons. Okay, actually plenty of space left on this. Absolutely miles left. I mean, we do need more fuel. We haven't put any fuel in, but sure. Yeah, there's like 200 tons left. We do actually need to do deal with maintenance life, etc. So I've probably cocked it up on that front. Let's say you're going to go out for like eight years. Yeah, we're actually over already without even dealing with the maintenance life issue. That's just deployment time. Okay, let me do some, you know, rejigging. Okay, this seems to work really, really well. Uh, we have a range that needs to be upped a little bit. If we look over here, it's telling us you probably need at least three large fuel tanks. We're using a lot more fuel for this. This is based around using a military jump engine, military engine. We get a lot more thrust. In fact, we can get up to like 2200. Remember the old Sophie sets only went 1500, although their engines were very out of date by now. I think two generations. So let's add another large fuel. We can get that really far, although that's a bit too big now. That's a little too big. Hmm. Where did you lie to me, game? Where did you lie? Um, it might be worth going for a slightly less efficient engine. 
and the, no, not a less efficient engine. Sorry, uh, a uh, just slightly smaller engine actually. Like as it is, we could probably shave like fifty tons or something off this engine. We could go two thousand, not two thousand two hundred. Um, and I think that would do it. Large. I think it's probably better just to say, okay, what if we make the engine more efficient? Is you know nice, but instead, what if, what if we went higher on that? It would probably cost us way too much. Like we're adding six on twenty-two there. Yeah. Okay, let's ramp the power down ever so slightly. Yeah, we'll go down to twenty. Uh, 202.4. So this is the MPD. I keep wanting to put commercial on it. It's not commercial. Uh, FPH of 20, 21 actually. It rounds. Mass of 1.15 kiloton by Galnum Marine. We'll instant that. Fresh tech. And then drop that on. And yeah, we're saving ourselves a fair bit here. Now we could even like buff the range a little bit or something. Maintenance life is fine. We're gonna put on a uh, thermal sensor, but we're probably not gonna put on this one. Hmm. Actually, you know what? Maybe we should put on this one. Put on a. Do we have an EM sensor we can go on? Yeah. And then that gives us like 50 tons left. Our EM and thermal sensors, by the way, really need updating. They're very much behind. But again, this ship isn't actually looking for uh, bodies in space. It's looking for survey locations, jump points. So it's not going to get close to any like habitat. So it's unlikely that these sensors will come into it. So I'm happy putting some more ones on. Extra 50 tons. Well, we can do that with fuel. Uh, we could do it the maintenance if we cared, but seven years I think is probably okay. If we go up a little bit, can we can we get that? We can. Huh. All right, just in case. I don't want this breaking down. We'll add ourselves an engineering space. No, engineering space is way too big. What am I talking about? Like that's dumb. Um, maintenance supplies. Maintenance. 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 Uh, small. Okay. Easily done. There we go. Coming in six tons under the limit. Over 2,000 kilometers per second. Four times the scanning capacity. This should be a win. It is also very expensive. Like, if you want to just compare that with the Sophie set. The Sophie set, which can do both, FYI. Hmm. Sophie set costs 513. This is going to cost... 740. But it will be faster and it will survey faster. And the idea being that, hey, we'll just send it out, do its job, and jump through multiple different points and just keep spreading out. I think we can even automate that. So, the Leo Cornelius, we are going to lock you in. Thank you very much. Close that up. Head over here. And then at the shipyard, which can deal with 7,000 tons, I'm going to say, we would like you to retool. For the Leon Cornelius. And it will do it free and immediately. Perfect. And then we're going to say, build me four of them. Youthful indiscretion. Yes, it is culture names. Sweet. Profit margin. Sanctified parts list. Oh, sanctioned parts list. And teething problems. In disregard for awkward fact. Ah, shame I couldn't build that one. Okay, they'll be ready in uh, just over a year, I think. May of next year? May of next year. Brilliant. Now, when is this ordnance going to be done? March. We do need more missiles. Our stockpiles are uh, a little bit, a little bit short, to say the least. You know, a few hundred isn't going to really do much. Not when we're trying to supply a fleet.
You know what? We're actually going to take 20% off you. Sorry. We're going to put that 20% onto the Ordnance Factories because, dear God, we need them. Not that we have people to work in them, obviously. Our worker shortage is pretty dire. Um, although, just checking. Hmm. We have a Jagnus that's just sitting around by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to start using that to take things over to Luna. Because there's 6.5 million people there. Which means 10 times 7. 70 trips. So 70 trips. And if we move like finance centers. Yeah. So load that. Go to the moon. Unload. Refuel. And do that 69 more times. <laughs> hey, I can do that in 8.8 .8 hours. Well, not with the loading time, you can't. Okay, we've built our first two command frigates. The Implacable Justice and the Spectre of Ruin. Uh, the G1 Tantalum is complaining about lack of fuel. Uh, you coming back, mate? Mate, you should be coming back. What's your standing order? Less than 20% fuel? Re re review fuel? Fu what, what, what are you doing? Why are you not doing this? God damn it. Can't trust you. Auto route back to Sol. Uh, and we won't even refuel, resupply you. We're just going to pull it there on you. I think maybe we'll do that for everyone. Silver. Yeah. Come back to Sol. We can take them apart for geo survey sensors, grav sensors, a whole lot. So, very slowly, we'll bring them all back. Bring it all back to you. Do, 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 do. Don't stop. Never give up. Trying to bring you back to... You're in tear at the moment. Oh, that's miles away. Oops, sorry. Oops, location. And the Osmium's already here. Okay. Uh, now the Implacable Justice and the Spectre of Ruin are done, we're going to want to actually start work on the next two. So, the Vinco Redemptor. Use components, please. And the Iron Requiem. And they're going to be built in January of next year. Looks like we don't actually have all components for them. Otherwise, they probably would be a bit faster. Hmm. Okay, we built a Vash 2. Only one Vash 2. I don't know why we're building one ahead of time. I guess when we started building them, we only had a couple of components ready. But that does mean we can build the next Vash. Uh, not Vash. Vash 2. That uh, will catch me at some point. Mark of Honor. Done. Now, funnily enough, you're going to get built in July. Okay, even though we've got the components. Fair enough. Uh, we've got ordnance production. Lovely. And we're seeing, you know, people exceeding the deployment times. So well, good job of bringing them back. I think we're going to keep going. The 17 BP will also go for that. Oh, we kind of need it. And it'll be done November this year. So, seems like the kind of smart move here. Okay, so we just built the squids. Why are the squids run out of fuel? Is there something going on here? We did say they have a minimum fuel. Are we out of fuel at Earth? That could get worrying. Yep. Yep. We're going to pause all tasks 
because we can't afford to refuel any of these. Oh, we can't pause all tasks. We literally can't pause all tasks. God damn it. Okay. Uh, we're going to pause all tasks that are close to completion. Oh, dear. Well, that's worrying. I guess we could... Can we get a... Can we get a, a ship to turn its fuel over? There must be a way to do this. This must have come up before. Because we've got the Lilstrom in orbit. Refill and resupply from colony. Uh, no. Okay, maybe we can select another fleet. Uh, cargo fleet. Refill from stationary tank, because I want to do it the other way around. Cargo fleet, let's try doing it the other way around. Refuel from own tankers, no. I don't think we can suck the fuel out of another ship. Only tankers. We could maybe flag the tug as a tanker to do it. I don't know. It seems a bit annoying. Uh, annual fuel production is still 5 million. So in theory, uh, we should be okay. And once we tug the station out to Jupiter, should be fine. Yeah, that's what I get for delaying the tug. Ah, fuel problems. Fuel problems. This is, you know, this is definitely a problem. Um, you know, this ordnance factory thing that I was saying, hey, you know, what if we just like do an ordnance factory thing sometime? Yeah. Uh, let's, let's not do that. Get us out in June. That's, um, not going to be fast enough. Let's also cancel infrastructure and research facilities and automated mines and deep space you know what? Finley shards as well. Uh, keep going the missile launchers though. They're, they're quite useful. Actually, up the amount we give you. Yeah. Have fun. Uh, you, on the other hand, got up to 80%. We'll be done in May. Next month. Okay, we need to solve this. This is the problem. This is not good. We can get a bit of fuel back, right? Uh, we have some ships in orbit. We can we can scrap. Okay. Uh, you, scrap. I don't want to scrap the fishies. Uh, I kind of keep the empties for now. The steak. Yeah, let's scrap the steak. All right. What else can we suck the fuel out of? Um. Ooh, uh, I guess the Sophie set. Scrap. The Osmium. Those will both give us a bit of fuel back. Okay, this is a problem. This is definitely a problem. Fuel woes. You've got only so-and-so of your maximum fuel. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem, right? There we go. We have the thigh. Uh, we, we're going to production a load of stuff. We'll deal with that later. Fuel shortage in making missiles. It's got that bad. Right. Let's try and deal with this. Uh, refresh. Base station. Uh, we'll detach you. Uh, we'll also detach you. And your annual production is 24 million litres. Oh, yeah, because it's applied by our, like, tech. Right, okay. 24 million litres of fuel? I'd like that. That would be good. Let's go find our ridiculous tug. Uh, the Altair is orbiting Earth. The Lilstrom is also orbiting Earth. Oh, you two are just the worst. Uh, 
also we have moved to io right with our terraformer how's it doing we should we check this before i forget mm, i'm just getting up there still work to do cool okay the lilstrom having not done anything been waiting around all the time we're going to grab the where is it a lot of stuff going on here bye we're gonna grab the fight that sounded wrong tractor whoops any ship Go to, and it, just to double check, I'm not going to cop this up. It is Jupiter, right? Yeah. Of course, Jupiter's 0.5, so we're only going to get like 12 million per year. Mm. Go to. Where is just Jupiter? Like, I can move to a moon. Oh, pardon me. God damn it. <clears throat> <clears throat> the plants don't seem to be showing up in here. What if we close that? Oh, there we go. Now it's working. Why so weird? We'll release track. We'll move to location, then we'll release track ships. I mean, while you're doing that, I guess you're going to do the same thing you've always done. Grab another. Where are you? Optimal habitat. Finley Shaz. Right. We're going to watch the Lielstrom. Uh, we also need to double check on our industry because it's probably completely out of whack now. Yeah, it's 4% just sitting here. <laughs> like, hey, what do you want to do with this 4%? Well, I guess we probably want more fuel, right? At least in the short term, and then we can move the fuel station somewhere else. So it's actually going to be another pie for now. Although that's going to cost us in geranium. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then we'll get a, a tire. I think we have to. We need the fuel. Right. That's said and done. Let's watch the Lielstrom. What happens after two minutes? Well, it's going to take you 26 days to get out there. Okay. Okay, we're scrapping. We're getting fuel back. Still a fuel issues. Tantalum's in Earth orbit. Hey, Tantalum, welcome back to Earth orbit. Yes, I'm going to murder you. 11.6 days till it gets there. It's there! Fuel issues still. Sure. You can go away now. Uh, okay, Lilstrom. It is just you in the fleet. Come back to Earth. And don't refuel. Whatever you do, do not refuel. You're not welcome. Now, if we go find our... What's it under? FHS. The tie. Orbiting. It has produced half a million fuel already, it says. Okay. Okay. Um, Earth, how you doing, mate? You've got a little bit of fuel there. We're gonna need to eventually send a tanker to go pick up this fuel. Which means we need a tanker to have fuel. We're gonna nominate the squid one. You get the honor. Refuel. Okay. You've got a tiny bit of fuel. Good enough. Here's your duty from then on out. Please do me a favor and go to here. Uh, just move to location for now. We're going to give you... I wonder if we could do this with like... Some sort of... Probably standing order, right? And then say your primary standing order is to refuel at refueling hub. That should in theory mean that you will go to the refueling hub, which is the thigh. Or the tie. Tie? No. 
And then when your tank is full, you will have to transfer and return. It does say return, so we probably don't need to do this. Oh, we've completed yet another orbital habitat. Yeah, I think we might have overshot it with our construction centers. We're producing so fast right now. Uh, I guess we want to just increase the rate of research labs. Oh, the Apollo's game is like, ah, I've completed orders. I'm like, aren't you on a cycle? Oh, you ran out of fuel. Well, more like that you can't actually refuel. Let's check you real quick. Um, yeah, you're like, hey, where's that refuel I was promised? It's breaking all my cycles. This is not good. Please get rid of the thulium. You've done great service, but you need to be executed for the good. A great, a good. Okay, production of geo services is complete. We've trained the Zeno Art Company. We've scrapped a few things. We've gained a bit of fuel. Okay. That was very close to the wire. We did just have a fuel crisis, but we did manage to avert it just about. Uh, I'm going to say pop back to Earth and do a quick um, resupply from colony. Refuel and resupply from colony. Transfer fuel to colony. There we go. Because, you know, when you get back, you still want to transfer the fuel across, so it'll be fine. We'll just use a tiny bit of fuel getting there and back, which is, you know, negligible. And then as per standing orders, you've moved back to refuel. Okay, it keeps saying it's moving to refuel. I'm like, hey, mate, you don't, you don't need to do that. Okay, so the way it looks like is I can either... I, I'm Basically, I'm kind of right on this. We could set up an order and then we can cycle it, which unfortunately would mean it's constantly going back and forth, so it wouldn't really be using its full fuel tank. It'd be constantly burning fuel. Not that that would be a lot, but it'd be kind of a waste. The other way is that we can say uh, refuel at refueling hub and then just when tankers are full, do this. That's fine. The problem is that it's going to keep spamming it in our ledger. Be like, hey, I'm moving to refuel. Hey, I'm moving to refuel. Hey, I'm moving to refuel. And I don't like that. That's annoying. So we're going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go with... Move to... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, the tie... Refuel from Refueling Hub. And then go to Earth. And then transfer fuel to Colony. Now the problem is that's going to be done every five days. So there's a kind of like a little bit of a hack. And it's not really a hack we can do here. If we remove all and we say first things first. Go to Colony and refuel, uh, transfer fuel to Colony. And then we use order delay. There is minimum available. Which might work for fuel. I, I'm not sure. You know what? Let's try it. There's only one way to know. Minimum available. And we're going to try saying, hey, go there when there's 10 million fuel available. If there isn't, just wait. And then we cycle moves. And that way, it will say at Earth and then it'll go, there's fuel available. It'll travel out. It'll get the fuel. We'll come back to Earth. And it'll wait and go, it's in theory. I've not actually done this before, but, you know, what? now's now's the time. I, I could test this by, like, you know, just space mastering in extra fuel or something. But let's give it a go. So currently it's orbiting Earth, transferring fuel to Colony. Great. And now it's saying refuel from refueling hub, minimum 10 million. Let's just double check. You don't have 10 million. Okay. So we've confirmed that uh, minimum available does not work. So instead, we'll remove that last one. And we'll go with, unfortunately, an order delay. Now, I believe we make 24 million fuel per, you know, whatever. Let's just double check how fast we're making fuel. So it's 24 million liters. Now, I'm not sure that is because our availability of fuel isn't great. 
that means we need to make more than two trips a year. So we're talking about a trip every, well, I guess exactly. It works out as 200,000 is a month, so every five months. So what would five months be in seconds? Well, you know, handily, I can just say to Google, five months in seconds. And it's, it's giving me it to the power. I, I don't want it to the power. Ah, luckily there are results on Google for this. 13 million. So we're going to go over here. We would like to say, hey, can you transfer that? Great, cool, perfect, lovely. Thai. Refuel from refueling hub. Or we might want to get rid of the commas or it might throw an error. I think it was not of the correct format. No. Oh, it's probably complaining about the minimum available. That's what it was been doing. Okay. 13, 15, 0, 1, 2, 3. There we go. Yeah, didn't like a zero. Uh, and yeah, that's 152 days. Okay. Let's see if this works. Oh, sweet. And we also got our shipyard operation time saving. Well, you know what? It's probably a good time to be like, hey, you know that fuel research we could have been doing this entire time? Let's go do that. Mm. Oh, it's mining the sorium. It must be using our mining tech. I wonder if that's it. I wonder if he's using our mining rate. Either way, we'll also up our fuel production. It's cheap. And anything right now would be beneficial. It is. Uh, it, it does appear to say it's moving. That's a bit worrying. Are you are you sure you're moving? Okay, that probably isn't moving then. It's just saying it's got a speed, but it doesn't. Okay. Uh, we also got ordnance production. Great. I don't think we want many more missiles kinetics apart from our gauze cannon rate, so we'll just flip back over to the gauze cannon. And all of that looks pretty good. The only thing I'd probably say is that we'd want to increase our ground, but ground combat, we're already going ham. We've got both of these guys working at 15 out of 15, so. Maybe we want to increase the, the fuel production, like take five off here and chuck them onto fuel, maybe. Sure, why not? How are we doing now on Earth, that industry? Hey, okay, a bit better. Uh, we're still going to have fuel issues at some point. That's not going to be fun. And why are you going to be completed in 97? 20 years time. Oh, I'm building 16 of them. Whoops. That's better. It'll be completed February of 2080. Okay, we've also just built uh, two more Hardies. And that probably means we're out of fuel, right? No, we've got 0.39. Yay. This is not good. Well, I guess we can unpause all these shipyard tasks. They won't have fuel, but they'll get done. Okay, so we've just built a whole load of Vash 2s, which, you know, obviously have eaten every single drop of fuel that we have in the entire world. Uh, and we're going to want to build more. Because, you know, that's how we roll. Uh, okay. Let us build more Vash 2s. Please use components. And yep, they'll be building in June next year because using components are speeding up a fair amount. Great. Also, IO apparently has a pretty warm atmosphere now. And the surface temperature is acceptable. Brilliant. I would totally get one of my tugs to move you now. I may have just sent it away. 
think what I'll probably do is I'll probably just abandon one of the orbital habitats just in space. To be like, hey, someone else go get like this. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be busy. Okay, you're a billion kilometers away. Oh, whoops! I gave this thing an order with a delay. So it's actually not going to do anything. Let's remove all. That actually turned out to be a good thing. Please go and move this to... Uh, Callisto. I mean, we could go to Titan. It's a more important world, but Callisto... What does Callisto have? Callisto also has Geranium. It's mostly Macassium, though. I think, yeah, going to Titan is going to be more important because we need that Corundium. Bruchitanium is also useful. So let's go grab the doo -doo 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 Greenfield and then head over to Titan. And then please track the ship, then move to Earth. And I, I guess then we're going to move the giant orbital habitat. Uh, tractor, any ship and fleet. Go to Calica. Go to Calica. Release tractor ship into the fleet. Come back to Sol and don't refuel. But if you do, do not refuel. Okay. That, however, leaves Europa almost habitable. Just a little bit more water. Io. Just waiting for that water to rain down more. And how about Luna? The atmosphere is no longer breathable because the amount of oxygen is too high. What? No! Oh, the water came out of the atmosphere and ruined it. Did it kill anyone? No. Okay, we're good. That would have been awkward. So, um, yeah, because the water came out of the atmosphere... The percentage of oxygen is now above 30%. It can't go above 30%. And it did, so it became toxic. Uh, we can fix that quite easily. Might have to take a jaunt with the um, the terraforming station. Uh, yeah. Whoops. I mean, otherwise, it's it's almost terra... It's, look! The water's almost at 20%. So close. So very close. Actually, might not be enough water. Uh, right, I'm going to have to make some adjustments here. Unfortunately, we're not moving to Titan. We're moving to Luna. And a very quick terraform should actually just solve this. Yes, a load of stuff ran out of fuel. I get it. We've upped our fuel production. We've also trained our geological survey teams. Lovely. 41 days. Okay. Well, I've got a lot of... A lot of fixing up of stuff to do. Oh, dear. That'll have to be next time, though. I've been at Relysium. Uh, go check out the interaction and stuff in the Discord. Yeah, I did cock this up a little bit with the fuel. But we're getting better. Uh, we've got a military now. Admittedly, they can't afford to go anywhere. But if the enemy will come slowly towards us in a single file, we should be okay. Yeah. Uh, we have ourselves some geosurvey teams. We can't afford to send them anywhere. But they can, they can you know, geosurvey. That's nice. And uh, yeah, we've also got uh, the moon, which is now toxic. But will very shortly not be, hopefully. We should probably set that up. Just just so I don't forget. Be like, hey, do you want like uh, nitrogen? 0.17. That should bring us up to uh, not die. Yeah. Like, subscribe, that jazz, stay shiny, whoops.